Hey everyone, in this video you'll learn all about reasoning models. Large language models are big neural networks that learn to predict the next word in a sentence. And if you saw my video on large language models, you'll know that they can do some pretty amazing things, like translate languages, create recipes, and even generate computer code. But are they good at math? Well, not so much, at least until recently. When I ask GPT-4 to make change for a dollar, it gives me only 80 cents, and its confidence is a bit misplaced. You're probably thinking, but wait, weren't computers invented to be good at math? How is it that one of the world's most sophisticated computer programs can't make change? Well, the real gap is not math per se, but complex reasoning abilities. So, can a large language model be good at math? And not just good, superhuman? This seems hard. Can people even design a program that's better than the humans who built it? Well, one example is AlphaZero, an AI program that beat the world's best chess and go players. Instead of relying on knowledge from human experts, AlphaZero's programmers taught it to learn its own strategies from scratch by playing millions of games against itself to get better and better. Here's how that works. A Go game starts with an empty board. Black moves first, and there's a branch for each possible move, from the top left to the bottom right. White goes next and introduces more branches, and so on. Each game is a path down that tree, which can result in a win or a loss. The goal is to learn a policy that generates winning paths. You can model that policy as a neural network that takes the state of the board and predicts the next move. And you can train that network using a very simple rule. Whenever a game is lost, you adjust the parameters of that policy to penalize all moves by the losing player. When it's a win, you reinforce those moves by increasing their probabilities. This approach is called reinforcement learning. And if you repeat it millions of times, it can converge to a superhuman policy. AlphaZero has a couple advantages that help make it superhuman. First, AlphaZero is not limited to human conventions and develops innovative new strategies and playing styles. Second, whereas a human can play a few thousand games in their lifetime, AlphaZero plays millions of games. It gets way more practice. Cool, so we have a program that can beat humans at Go. Can we do the same for math? First, we have to invent a game. Here it is. I'm going to ask you a random math problem, and then you have to solve it. I'll choose problems that are easy to verify, so I can make sure your answer is correct. And instead of two people, the computer will play this game against itself. This is what DeepSeek did with a model called R10. The model is prompted with a random math problem, and it generates an answer. If the answer is correct, it wins, and its parameters are optimized to increase the probability of all the tokens in the answer. If the answer is wrong, the probabilities of those tokens are penalized, just like alpha zero. Okay, but how much would we reward or penalize an answer? Instead of a single response, R10 generates multiple possible answers for each problem during the training process, scores each one, and weights the score based on how far it is from the average. This is called GRPO, and it helps the policy to converge to a good solution. But it turns out that encouraging correct answers isn't quite enough. For example, if I tell you that the solutions to this equation are 3 and negative 5, you could try to memorize that solution. But it's a lot more helpful if I teach you the quadratic formula, because you can now solve any problem that looks like this. In fact, large language models already know the quadratic formula, because they're typically trained on Wikipedia and a ton of other online math knowledge. We just need to tell it to use the formulas it knows. In other words, to reason. One idea is to instruct it to break the problem down by giving directions in the prompt like, first find the right formula, then apply it, then check your answer. This is called chain of thought prompting. And while it can be effective, it's hard to come up with instructions that work for all problems. Instead, the DeepSeek team tried something ridiculously simple. They just asked the model to think. 
Specifically, they defined a template and rewarded outputs that followed that template. For example, if the prompt is to solve this equation, a valid solution might look like this, where it first identifies the coefficients, then applies a formula to arrive at two solutions, verifies those solutions, and reports the answer. But why doesn't the model cheat and ignore the thinking block? Well, because thinking results in a more accurate answer, which leads to higher rewards. In fact, as training progresses, the thinking block gets longer and longer as the model uses it to explore multiple solutions and double checks its answers. Okay, how well does it work? Let's ask R1 to make change for a dollar using at least one of each type of coin. As you can see, it generates quite a bit of text thinking through the solution. Let's go back to the top. It starts by listing the coins, including the half dollar, which I wasn't expecting when I wrote that question. Then it correctly guesses that I probably don't want the half dollar because it's so uncommon. That's pretty clever. It's making good decisions to handle an ambiguous question. Okay, so now it tries adding one of each coin. That's 41 cents, so you need 59 more. So then it introduces an equation for the remaining 59 cents and finds a solution. Three quarters, one dime, two nickels, and five pennies. It could stop there, but it decides to keep going and see if there are other good answers. Here's another, and a third. Now it realizes that it has to pick one of the three based on my prompt. So it spends a bunch of time trying to figure out which one to choose. It triple checks the solutions one more time and moves on to the answer phase. Finally, it presents one answer, verifies, and briefly mentions two other solutions at the end. Now this is a ridiculously long response to a simple question, but you can see it's really going all out to make sure it gets the answer absolutely right. It's kind of amazing that this works, given that the approach is so simple. The key insight is that just showing your work makes your answers better. Your old elementary school math teacher was right. R10 is optimized for accuracy, not human comprehension. Its explanations can be hard to follow, and it can even mix English and Chinese in the same response. So the DeepSeek team introduced several modifications to improve readability, including fine-tuning on human explanations. The resulting model is called R1, and that's the model that generated the change for a dollar result I just shared. Now, it's not just math. These reasoning models can answer all sorts of logic and scientific questions. GPQA is one of the most challenging benchmarks, with questions written by experts in biology, physics, and chemistry. The first model I showed you, GPT-4, got 31%, which is just above random chance. PhD level is about 70. R1 scored 72. That's pretty incredible progress in a year and a half. There are in fact many reasoning models by OpenAI, Anthropic, Google, and others. Are they actually superhuman? Well, not quite, but they're already as good as PhD level experts. And if you extrapolate this graph out a few years, it gets pretty interesting. While Alpha Zero truly learns from zero prior knowledge, R10 starts with a pre-trained language model from the DeepSeek team called V3 that's fluent in English and Chinese. But what if it also started with zero knowledge? Perhaps, like AlphaZero, R10 could learn innovative new reasoning and proof techniques, and maybe it would create its own AI language for reasoning tasks that's more efficient than human languages. I guess it will still need to learn one of our languages to explain the answer to us lowly humans. I hope you've enjoyed this video on reasoning models.